what percent of the cuts that you might have to take you think are actually you know reasonable to well, consider? Uh, is there any good of this there, process whatsoever? There is. Whatsoever? There is. There is. So, what happens anytime you're in war for a long period of time, uh, you know, 12 years, and it's happened in the past, is because of our attempt to react and make sure that we have everything necessary for our soldiers, sailors, air marines forward, we tend to spend a bit more money on providing that. And it's not as efficient that we'd like it to be. So there clearly are efficiencies that we can gain. There's efficiencies we need to gain in training. There's efficiencies that we need to gain in our acquisition systems. There's efficiencies that, that, that we need to tighten up on just normal management techniques. And we're, gonna, we're doing that. And that was part of the $300 billion that Secretary Gates tried to start when he started this. So there's some of it. We're not saying we can't take any more cuts. What I was trying to lay out to everybody is we agreed to take about $800 billion worth of cuts, approximately 300 when Secretary Gates presented, the 487 that we agreed to. And those are based on downsizing a little bit, getting more efficient, providing a force that's more effective. Adding on to that now is going to cause some issues, and, and that's – so we understand. But I think people just kind of say, well, it's – you know, people will quote, well, it's only 10 percent of your budget. Well, again, if you look at the numbers and you look what it really means, it's not – it's much more than 10 percent uh, over time, and it's critical to us as we, as we move forward. For the Army, about 48 percent of our budget is people. So if you want to reduce cost of the Army, you've got to reduce people. But there's two sides of this. We have to not only, and so I got to balance that. The one thing I promised I would never do is have too much, too many people where I can't get them the right, I can't sustain them at the right readiness levels or give them the best equipment. And I'm not going to walk away from that. But what you have to be careful of is if you get too small, I believe you lose your ability to deter conflict. And I, my concern is what you don't, you have people who miscalculate. And almost every great war we've been into, a great regional conflict, is based on a huge miscalculation by somebody. And what I worry about is we will cause people to miscalculate, which will then cause us to have to get involved. And so we want to maintain the right capacity that people understand that we still have the ability to respond and we still have the ability to ensure our own security to our nation across the broad spectrum of our joint capabilities.